Hey folks, you ever been shopping in a grocery store and you get lost and you're in the wrong aisle and what was you looking for? Bear, bear, bear with me. Hot Pockets. Well folks, you really don't need them because I'm going to show you how to make them homemade and that dough that we put on there is better. Oh my gosh, and the flavor that comes out with the pepperoni and the cheese and whoo, Hot Pockets. Let's go, I'm getting the fire ready. Welcome to camp and what are we talking about today folks something that you can put in your pocket and keep you warm forever No, I'm not talking about a hot coal that you drop in there. I'm talking about a hot pocket, but look around here Pan around here Shannon. Do you see electric pole anywhere? Solar panel generator beagle running a squirrel cage to conduct electricity <laughs> No, so how are we gonna cook a hot pocket? Well folks, I'm finna show you how and let me tell you, my kids and my grandkids have probably made this company a fortune. I mean, they have eaten so many of them things. And I just want to see if they're still the same because I ain't seen one in about 15, 20 years. And I want to see if they give you that deal. They used to come with a little silver deal. Yeah, it's in there. And, uh, oh, there it is. You take it out of that. We could set that out there in the sunshine and then maybe about a week if a possum or a cow didn't come by and get it, we could have a hot pocket. Everything you need to know about this recipe and any products that we use down there will be in the little link down there below the video. Now I'm not talking when you're watching, it's just gonna pop up. You got to scroll on down where it says show more. Hit the show more, yep, and you'll find it Go right down there, printable recipe, take you over to the blog. And folks, there's more than just a Hot Pocket recipe on there. There is a bunch of stuff on there. Well, we need to put us some Hot Pocket dough together, and folks, this is very simple. There's very few ingredients in there. I need you to get a cup of warm water. Not hot, it'll kill that yeast. But we need to proof the yeast, and I want you to have a full level cup of warm water. And then, yeast. Make sure it's good yeast. Don't buy the off-brand cheap stuff that says, I'm gonna save you a lot of money. Yeast is what's happening and you need it to be good. And for sure, check the date on there. Make sure that it is good, but we're gonna proof it and see that it's good. Because when you proof yeast and you stir it up there, it's gonna foam a little bit and go to bubbling. And that's what we're after. So let's stir that up. Well, you've seen the yeast is a leaving creature. It is. and whew, Things are good. Make sure that if you dump that in there, folks, and it ain't frothing up like that and you don't see none of them bubbles, throw that batch out and get you another. Now, you can use olive oil, avocado oil, whichever you prefer. I prefer avocado and about a tablespoon and a half. And that is a guaranteed amount right there. Now, we need to give it some salt, which is that much. And, folks, I like to give mine a little black pepper, just coarse ground black pepper. And just shake you some in there. I like to put three or four teaspoons in there because it just gives it a little more flavor to me. And now, get your whisk back out. Stir it all up really well. And now we can think about what, as y'all say on YouTube, he's fixing to get the flour out. No, I'm gonna get the flour out. Y'all just sometimes don't hear it as well. Smoky for all purpose flour. Yeah, flour. Uh huh. Pretty close to that it is. And we're gonna start with about a cup and oh, three fourths to two cups, but just like with anything that you're making when you're using flour to mix it in, only use some at a time, stir it, then use some more. That way it ain't never gonna be too dry. So we're gonna put about a cup and a little, say a half in there. And then we're going to find a spoon, I hope. And I need you just to stir this around because we got to get it all incorporated there well. And we want this to be able to form into a ball shape here in a minute. And you can see we're definitely going to have to add some more flour. But I like to put it in in about half at a time. So we'll add us some more in there. That ought to get us pretty close, maybe. And if you're using this with one of them fancy mixers and it's got that dough paddle on it, just go ahead and add that flour in there and just let it run on three or four, whatever half speed you got there, till it'll sort of turn loose of that hook and just begin to form a doll, a good dough ball in there, and you'll be in good shape. 
a little bit more. Let's get us some to go ahead and greet. Oh, which way's the wind out of? It's a little out of everywhere today, so we just hope it get there somewhere. Because, folks, we need to knead this just a tad when we get it out there. And you be telling yourself, when you see that little dab of dough dump out there, he ain't going to make but one hot pocket's all, all he going to get out of that. Folks, this is a very deceiving thing it is because time we get this all put together, then we're going to get it in a little grease bowl, cover it, set it in a warm spot, and let it rise for what? About two hours. So if you're going to make these for lunch, you need to start about 9.30, okay? You'll be in good shape. I just need you to roll this around there. Just make sure it ain't sticking to your fingers. Like I say, we're just going to need it about five. Five minutes or five times? About five minutes. Oh, dang. Which ain't bad. You just keep her going there. Just make sure you keep your hands flared and your board flared. And it feels good and it smells good. And then I need you just to take it when you get close to the end of that five minutes and just sort of pull that dough to the bottom. Keep rolling it around, pulling it to the bottom. Put it in a grease pan. Make sure that you grease it really well. Cover it with some plastic wrap. Set it in a warm spot. Let it rise two hours. But shut your eyes just a minute and just hold on just a second and due to the magic of TV and Kent starting early. Do the magic TV hands. Abras cadabras, yes. We have what we call doubled in size. Dump it out on a flyered surface. You're gonna to have to have a little flyer on your hands again, flyer the top of that. I just need you to pat it down pretty flat, just with your hands. I never put a rolling pin on this to start out with. Uh oh, it's Major, Major the Dough Inspector. Hey, are you a dough inspector? For those of y'all that are new, Major come during the bad snowstorm he did. We rescued him, and um, we're trying to make a wagon dog out of him. You can see their job here is what they got to do with the wagon, <laughs> so they're in pretty good shape. You can see we got her in there into a trapezoidal-like figure that is pretty close to one inch thick because, folks, we need to try to get eight pieces out of it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh -oh. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's Look not it. even. Okay, we got the first participant. We're going to call this fella right here. Now, these others, to keep that wind that's coming through here out of the northeast from just wearing it out, I want you to go ahead and cover them up. So, folks, I need you to get it about six inches long. Here I do. Three to four inches wide because we got to have enough that we can put our filling on there and then roll it back over. But... You didn't see me do this, did you? I snuck it in on you. Whole stick of Kerrygold butter, three minced garlic cloves. Let her sit over on old Bertha and just get all that flavor to melt it and get it marinated in there. And I need you just to get you about that much in a spoon. Dump her on there. My paintbrush apparatus is what? Broke. So we're gonna <laughs> use the short handle methyl. Mm -hmm. Put it across there. I need everybody to have some of it on there. Now, Shan, what do you be liking on a hot pocket? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Well, just let me see what I might can find right here. Well, there is some pepperonis. Now, folks, sauce-wise, you can do this in three or four different variations. You can. You can get you some of that homemade jarred up marinara sauce. What I really love to use more than anything else, and you're going to be down on me because I forgot to bring it to the wagon, and it's 24 mile to town, so I ain't trotting back is some of our green chili chipotle relish. Lay you a thin layer of that right on top and then go to putting stuff on there. Ranch would be good too. Yes, ranch would be good, but also some salsa. Just a little bit of salsa down through there. So I got me some Canadian bacon here and we're gonna lay it on there. And then I'm gonna come back with some pepper jack cheese and lay it on there. And then guess what, Shan? Let's try to, to try to get this bad boy put to bed. Now, folks, it's just a roll and a tuck method. Try to keep everything to where when you come over, the seam is going to be on the bottom. That's what we're after. So get the ends tucked under. Seam is on the bottom. And guess what? We have our first homemade hot pocket. 
right there you go. It's simple as that can be. So bear with me while we get another one to going, and I'm gonna make a jumbo style here for Shan and her pepperoni. Well, got our field skillet over here, and you see me pour a little avocado oil in there, and just get it good and hot, folks, because we're gonna fry this really on all four corners on a round circle. So let's just get our first participant in there. Seam side down first. And you just want him to give him a good little frying. Make everybody happy. Pardon my reach. Right into your living room. But we're just gonna let them fry till they get golden brown. Turn them up on the edge, roll them over to the side. They're gonna puff just a little. And we talking about hot pocket. I know some of you be thinking while well, you're sitting there and you're seeing that B-roll footage of them frying in there. Cowboy Kent Rollins, you bake them in a microwave or you bake them in an oven. Folks, I have baked a batch of these in a cast iron skillet and to me they always turned out better fried and it is quicker that way. And I'm going to give you another little old tip. This stuff make a good pizza dough if you're in a hurry. You just roll it out there. Mm, good to go. But you see me when I was frying, let them get golden brown on both sides. And then just sort of stand them up on the edge. Let them get a little brown there and a little brown on that side. You are good to go. And then right there at the end, take some of that good garlic butter. Spray it back over it. Paint it on there like Michelangelo was a painting the Sistine Chapel. I mean, make it look pretty. And then what? Get you some of that Parmesan cheese and sprinkle all on there and you are good to go. And there is some cheesy goodness going on in there. I, I do be liking me some cheesy goodness. But I've had some really good help today. So first, right off the bat, we'd like to feed the participants of the cooking challenge. Duggar, come on over. It's hot pocket time. Major said I'm about to figure this out on the second week. Come on, Duke. Hurry up and get in here in the picture. We're holding up progress. Everybody's ready now. Hot pocket, hot pocket, and a hot pocket. Any tail wags? Woo, we the big says. Major, can you wag that little nub you got there, buddy? <laughs> Guess it ain't gonna happen, is it? So, a uh, hot. Wound up going. Mm, mm, mm. Do the hop spot. Keep it a hop and a hop bag. For what? A hot pocket. There's some great flavor just coming out of that dough. Remember what I told you that you could just take that dough, make you some breadsticks out of it? Mm, folks, it is good. But hey, sorry, I didn't have that relish with me today, but you can good it because that's what's gonna kick this over the top of the flavor ladder, plumb over there on top of the roof of the neighbor's house. So let me have one more bite. Mm. Well, I know y'all been waiting, and I've been waiting too. Hot pocket versus hot pocket. Pretty similar in size and shape, yes. And there's, here, let me see. Yeah, ours will fit right in the little suitcase as well. So we're going to get a little knife, and we're going <laughs> to... It finally went, and look in there. Cheesy goodness don't look so bad, does it? And let's see what this one cut like. You want to? I mean, the homemade bread flavor is really the kicker. Yeah. So, there you have it, folks. Hot pocket versus hot pocket versus it is easy to do. And remember, everything that we used in this video will be listed down there in the little link below. This is an easy recipe. Get the kids in there. Let them pick out their favorite toppings to put on it. Hey, and just have a good time because that's what cooking is meant for, to bring people together and enjoy the food and fellowship. As always, 
I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans and everybody that's keeping us safe. And we just lift them up. Hey, God bless y'all each and every one. We thank you. And for all you folks out there, guess what? God bless you each and every one. And I'll see you down the hot pocket trail. We think big. <laughs> Flyer flew off of it too. Whoa. Time out. You want to ever... Whew. Set it on Bertha. Yeah, she ain't no microwave. Is she just gonna eat it up? I don't know. We'll find out here in a minute. <laughs> See what Bertha, that's the first hot pocket she's ever had on her. Now she's made my pockets hot standing by her, but we'll see what happens to the hot pocket. That ain't gonna hold no water. Sure ain't. <laughs>